medium-sized technology company in Silicon Valley. I have been a financial analyst and a financial journalist previously. I've also been a research engineer in a telecommunications research laboratory, I filed several patents. I'm speaking to you tonight regarding the Occupy Wall Street movement and a proposal to satisfy that movement's requirements, that, that is to end poverty and rebuild the middle class without redistributionism. <clears throat> so what are the grievances that have triggered this movement? And in what form does this movement seek redress? So if we go back in history to the revolution, the United States became a fully embodied idea with the Declaration of Independence from Great Britain in 1776. This declaration stated what the authors conceived as a just treatment of human beings. It conceded that many injustices will be borne by people without breaking ties with a central authority. It concluded that the injustices were so great that their grievances had fallen upon such deaf ears that the only way they could hope to achieve redress for those grievances was to split asunder the tie between the central power and their communities. If you look at the issues today and read the Declaration of Independence, you would see we have vastly greater grievances today than our ancestors did in 1776. We just don't feel that we can do anything about it. <clears throat> the top 1% have built a first-class national security, correctional, and military system to make sure we can never wreak vengeance upon them. It's so first-class that it consumes one in six of every dollars of our economy, about 400% greater than it was before the Cold War. Today, people are demonstrating around the country, triggered by the Occupy Wall Street movement. People sense they are being taken by a corrupt system, that they are getting a raw deal. But any statement that they can make in any way threatens to fragment the basic unity of their message. What we do know is, one, we have a democracy, not a dictatorship of the corporations. Two, we know that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And three, the old Irish saying, behind every great fortune, there is a great scandal. And like any new impulse in the people, all seek to get in on the action. And others are suspicious of them. The Democratic Party and the trade unions seek to get in on this movement. So what is the real deal? How do people achieve peace of mind knowing that they have housing security, income security, medical security, and education security? in a time when fewer and fewer people need to be employed in our economy, recession or no recession. This could be a great moment to trigger some real positive change in this country, but the answer is not in the government in Washington. It rests in our own hands, in our communities. Allow me to explain how. It is logical for business to produce the best product at the lowest cost, and that does often mean automation and outsourcing. You can't fight progress, they used to say. <clears throat> it's very simple. Rather than seeking reform government, which I hope the movement does succeed in, you can make it irrelevant by self-organizing in your communities. People need not jobs, but equity in the things that are needful to them. They should be able to own the place they live in without paying any monthly payments for it, nor any taxes upon it. They should have equity in their schools. They should be essentially like a startup shareholder in a essentially private education system that they are a member of a co-op in. The same with a network of medical clinics, the same with a network of farms, and the same with a local network of manufacturing industries. Because we only need about 20% of our labor force at most to provide these needs. Also, if this is true, people's stress levels will collapse their ability to have time to exercise and to have space to, to uh, go fishing and whatnot will reduce obesity and disease. And the, we can focus on keeping people healthy rather than treating the consequences. We can also chip away at the whole system of patents, which lock up medications and increase their price dramatically. This can be done by creating opt-in local institutions, high-quality, market-driven institutions that are essentially co-ops. Uh, the Plymouth Bay Company of the Pilgrims is an example of this. There was sweat equity that each member received, and they became wildly successful. The Oneida community and the Amana communities are other examples of this. As work gets more efficient, the co-op member benefits rather than suffering. That is, as work goes down, the dividend goes to the worker, 
it isn't accrued by a anonymous shareholder. We can satisfy both the conservative and the progressive. It doesn't have to be done necessarily through redistributionism or government intervention. And as soon as you are a member of these eight, I estimate, eight utility industry cooperatives, you will basically have no need for government, and you can eliminate most taxation. We don't need jobs. We need to have access to the things that are needful. We need to organize into community cooperatives that deal in farming, medical clinics, and education. If you study the economy, it is almost pure fluff. Insurance makes nothing other than telling you how risky something is. Finance makes nothing other than telling you how likely a business is to succeed. <clears throat> the welfare system produces nothing. The correctional system produces nothing. The military and the intelligence services produce nothing. The U.S. could easily negotiate long-lasting world peace, lay off 90% of its military, and still be a big bruiser for a long time to come, especially if the Occupy Wall Street movement and the Arab Awakening movement, along with Russia, China, Brazil, and India, develop constructive engagement. Drug dealing produces little. The psychiatrist has an incentive for his patient to stay on drugs or he loses a client. So too the jailer, so too the welfare administrator. Advertising produces little. With the internet and Wikipedia, we do not need to be informed of new products. Television produces little. It is a shadow of its former self. A network of community, cooperative, employee-owned businesses that has as their stated goal delivering the service the lowest possible overhead to its members, focus on lowering costs rather than increasing sales, would allow people to have all that is needful with less than one quarter time work once it is up and running. Then people could spend the other three quarters of their time either going fishing, exercising, doing craftsmanship, working on rebuilding their communities to a higher standard of beauty, uh, doing academic research, artistic endeavor, scientific endeavor, technological development. You can do whatever you want with your other three quarters of your time. You can advertise uh, sex services. You can do all the fluff things of our old economy to accumulate money, but you don't have to. Look at teaching today. Why do we have these teachers go into the class and perform this lecture on the eighth day of the school year? All over this country, all doing the same lecture. When you could have this done at Harvard University once over a three-month workshop and use computer-based self-driven uh, learning, which would be vastly more effective, and then break out into small groups with kids or do one-on-one -on -one with kids. It's because people want employment rather than the thing that employment is supposed to provide. Uh, so people protect their industries because they're afraid of losing their jobs, but a job is just a ticket to production. So if you can organize so that your costs are very minimal, you don't need these production tickets. They become a luxury economy, which you're welcome to join, but you're not required to because the place you live in is yours forever. You never have to pay anything for it. <clears throat> we need to eliminate employment and have people have equity in their community industries. Trying to protect jobs has created all kinds of mischief. Trying to prolong work rather than eliminate it is why we have terrible statistics. 25% of the world's prisoners with 5% of the world's population. 47% of the world's military spending. Uh, abysmally low educational scores, 28th out of 30 countries or 25th out of 30 countries uh, in education. We have one million people employed in spying largely on ourselves. We are fighting perpetual wars against an enemy that doesn't really even need to exist. The Arabs do not have any particular ill will towards the American people per se. They have their own issues, their own fish to fry. The BBC documentary, The Rise of the Politics of Fear, shows the name Al-Qaeda was actually developed here and that Bin Laden adopted it after he heard us using it and that he had only a handful of followers. War on terror is another form of full employment for our servicemen and our national security uh, 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 employees could live peaceably at home and have all that is needful. Do you think that everyone at 18 years of age would suddenly decide they want to go around the world warring with enemies that we are essentially creating? We have allowed our federal government to become an absolute power. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. We now have a soft dictatorship, but we can unplug it. <clears throat> this is the future of humanity that could be a paradise. 
All other directions are much less efficient, and many of them are extremely dark. The world of possessionless, alienated serfs living in fear of imaginary concocted terrors. To jumpstart this, we can look at redistribution of the money obtained through fraud and corruption. That money could be spent in part to repay the national debt and partly sent directly out to people in the form of uh, royalty checks, so to speak. And in fact, the entire government, if we re-engineer society along the lines that I'm describing, which does not require any new laws be passed, people can simply uh, organize within their communities to do this, uh, but it could be a royalty-based system because the, the government has so much land and assets it could literally turn a profit. This modality rewards people who actually work and contribute and could get major support from local entrepreneurs and philanthropists as it gradually disconnects people from being forced to consume from big corporations as they become more self-reliant. It is a modern equivalent of the Jeffersonian yeoman farmer, but it has elements of social justice as well to appeal to the left and to progressives. We can get away from monthly payments. Can you imagine living without any monthly payments? It's quite feasible. Libertarians, progressives, and small government conservatives, a Jeffersonian alliance. I have additional, more detailed material that I have posted that you can take a look at on this YouTube channel. Thank you, good night, and good luck.